it's all over. Top Democrat caught on camera threatening D.C. police chief. Today, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the former DNC chair who rigged the 2016 primaries for Hillary Clinton, promised to abuse her power for personal revenge on a top cop. She said there will be, quote, consequences if he doesn't hand over evidence, a laptop she owns that they are investigating. Oh, and the whole thing was caught on video near the end. Okay, so a little background info for you. The D.C. police are investigating one of Schultz's aides, a Pakistani named Imran Awan, who is thought to have been involved in a massive security breach of congressional data. He also billed the government $4 million for family members on the payroll that never actually worked. When the situation became clear, the police confiscated a laptop from the former IT worker. That laptop technically belongs to Schultz's campaign. Also strange was that Politico described the relationship between Schultz and Awan as a friendly personal relationship. Why is a senator friends with a random IT guy and why is she defending him now at risk to her own career? To really put it all together, you need to know that Schultz sits on the Appropriations Legislative Branch Subcommittee, which determines the budget for the D.C. police, hence her threat of, quote, consequences. That is, in, uh, is an abuse of power with zero question. Someone please tell me how it, make, it is that the media can blow up the Trump-Russia BS with zero evidence, but one of the heads of the Democrats can threaten a cop on camera and nobody says a word. Clearly, the media is not going to cover this properly. Why would they? She is their buddy. That's why we need to share this out to everyone. I'm talking friends, family, and even strangers. It's just that big. Oh, and remember to comment, impeach Debbie Wasserman Schultz now. Between rigging a presidential election and threatening a cop, she is a criminal after all. Let's take a listen to her. What about diversity? Mm -hmm. There really has been a challenge that the Capitol Police has faced systemically with diversity. She um, looks diversity in leadership, diversity in recruitment. Um, how are you focusing in on improving that? And um, I mean, I don't mean any disrespect, but it is hard to take your word for it. Uh, as you said, you're not, you're in the leadership now, sure. you're not in the rank and file. So Mr. Chairman, it, it might be helpful for us to have an open, you know, an informal meeting with the Capitol Police Union leadership so that we can hear from them. We don't have to do it in a hearing, but it would be, I think, good for members to hear from the union leadership. We have done that from time to time and give them an opportunity without the Capitol Police leadership here to talk to us about, uh, you know, some of their challenges. But Certainly, but diversity we, have, is we, we, uh, we have a great diversity officer, um, Natalie Holder, who comes to us from the private sector, and she's done a lot of work with, with uh, municipalities and <coughs> York City. Um, we have, uh, what I think we do is we, we include people. I think we... we do you have goals? Do you have goals to in, in, increase diversity? Absolutely. We want to broaden our everyone's perspective and we want to be able to... Um, I mean numerical, I mean numerical goals. Do you have a goal to say, take the leadership of the Capitol Police um, diversity from where it is now to a higher number we're always trying to build a bench with a very diverse workforce. So no. So yes. So you don't have, well, I don't have specific I don't have goals. Specific numbers, yeah. But I have, what I have is um, it, a policy of inclusion and being able to expand the bench. Okay, but without, without a plan, 
Yeah, I mean, to let the fox in the, in the hen house. Hen. You get it? That she is following. Let's let the, the fox stories, guard the hens. Um, um, That's what they're pushing for. Internally, we also are providing opportunities for people. Of course, we're all validated promotional processes, and we look at all of the, the aspects of promotion that we should. And I think that we are very inclusive. And I think that if you look at the, at the numbers in the promotions, it's a very diverse group. And we've given opportunities for I, I've never, minorities all along the I mean, line. Through my through my, the history of my career, I've never really seen significant changes in diversity without a specific written plan on how to accomplish it. And so, yeah, um, let's, are you let's planning let the fox on in. developing a specific written plan? Yes, the we'll diversity do? office, we are. Okay, if you could share that plan with me. Sure. Um, I can't wait really till Donald Trump drains that um, swamp. And then lastly, I, I'd like to know how Capitol Police handle um, equipment that belongs to a member or a staffer that's been lost within the Capitol complex and found or recovered by one of your officers. What happens? Sure. Well, it's processed on, a, on, a, on a, what's called a PDA one, which is a which is a, 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 a property record. And depending on the property, depending on how it's, if you can legitimately uh, determine ownership, then uh, it's generally turned back over to the, to the owner of the property. If there's if, if it's part of uh, of an ongoing case, then there are other things that have to occur for that to happen. So if a member says that they have equipment that's been lost and you find it, it would be returned to the member. In a general sense, yes. Okay. It has to, you have to identify. You have to be able to positively identify the property and be able to establish ownership. Right. And, and if ownership is established, if it's part of an ongoing case, then there are additional things that need to be done. But if the member owns the equipment and there is no ongoing case related to that member, then the equipment is supposed to be returned. Right. In, 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 in a general sense, yes. If no, I mean in a specific sense. If the member loses the equipment, says they lose the equipment, yes, and it is found by the Capitol Police, it is supposed to be returned. If ownership has been established, right. it will be returned. If it's subject uh, to an ongoing investigation or additional things okay. that need to be done. But not an ongoing investigation related to the member. If the equipment belongs to the member, it has been lost, they say it's been lost and it's been identified as that member's, and the Capitol Police is. Sorry that I'm interrupting now, but how come there isn't. She's pushing for this guy's computer, but they're saying that he built the government. $4 million for family members on a payroll that they never actually, that never actually work. So how is there not an ongoing investigation into this? That's what I'd like to know. Like, cause she's pushing as if there's no investigation and the poor guy, the police officer, you know, he probably has bills to pay and that's why he, you know, he's not giving it to her good, you know? supposed to return it, correct? Well, it's not a, I can't give a yes or no answer on that because I know- It's a simple yes or no answer. answer. Well, if, you lo if, if, I, if a member loses the equipment yes, and it is found by the Capitol Police or your staff and it is identified as that member member's equipment and the member is not associated with any case and that is their equipment, it is supposed to be returned, yes or no? Depends on the circumstances uh, and if the circumstances are- I, I don't understand how that's possible. Members' equipment is members' equipment. It is not, it is not, it, under my understanding, the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate members' equipment when the member is not under investigation. And why shouldn't it be? It is their equipment, and it's supposed to be returned. Under investigation. Well, I think there's extenuating circumstances in this case, and I think... I you think hear what he said? Extenuating circumstances in this case. And, um, you know, the necessary personnel, if, if that, in fact, is the case, and with the permission of, through the investigation, and we'll return the equipment. But until that's accomplished, I can't return the equipment. I think you're violating the rules when you, when you conduct your business that way and should expect that there would be consequences. I yield back. She did threaten him. Thank you for your testimony. There will be consequences, she said. So in other words, she's threatening him that he's going to lose his job. You see what I'm trying to say? That, like, she's threatening him, like, you're going to lose your job. This is, like, unbelievable. And, and this woman should be in jail herself, and she is still conducting 
uh, meetings. She's going to ask all the tough questions, but we appreciate both of your leadership and service to our country. We appreciate the officers that are out guarding the Capitol right now. They're all kissing uh, butt for the money. All the support personnel, civilian personnel. It's a dedication to dedication to service. And we just really respect what you do. We want to make sure we have a fine-tuned budget, uh, that we're uh, putting money in the right places. And so we'll work with you and the members and both parties here to come up with uh, a right budget going forward and look forward to uh, successful uh, service and uh, safety in this uh, Capitol campus. With that, the subcommittee will adjourn until 2.30 this afternoon when we will hear from the Library of Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you understand how come America is is in shambles because we have haggard criminals ruling in top offices like they were he was kind to her at the end like oh we appreciate your work you know this is very uh, nerve-wracking let us know what you think in the comments below and thank you so much for watching We'll keep you updated.